one week in, and for those who thought it was going to be a relaxing week in Camp Stuggan. Think the illusion's been well and truly shattered. Type faster! Type faster, I tell you! I do not see your fingers bleeding yet! So, after a visit from Paul Bragiel, who's a venture capitalist guru, the creative director for King, Steve Jarrett, and a lovely workout session from Aline Vestergov, um, I think it's fair to say it's been a pretty busy week, and it's only set to get busier here at Camp Sturgen week two, with all these mosquitoes. Right, let's go see what the developers are up to before I get eaten alive. So this is your game, which is called... Cerulean Moon. Cerulean Moon, oh, good word. Yes, it's a tale about a little girl who gets uh, cast away from her village and finds herself in an island. And uh, eventually she makes it inside this little uh, uh, temple and starts um, going further and further into the, into the ground. And that's where the game takes place. The control system for this is essentially, it's, it's for mobiles, right? Mobiles and touchscreen devices. Yes. Um, and so it's, oh no, I died! <laughs> so you move to the left and move to the right to control yes. her. What's happening here is that uh, with your finger you're actually pushing the floor. So the main character stays uh... in the same place and you're kind of dragging the floor under her feet. Oh, that's smart, yeah, because she's always in the centre of the screen. Yeah. It's very clever. The fact that you're not able to jump means that uh, once you fall through a level, through a section of the level, you can't come back up. You come back back up again. Oh. So, for example, some of the uh, the checkpoints you have to actually fall on them to activate them. And if you are falling on a checkpoint which is below you and you kind of miss that drop, then there's no way to activate it again. I see. It's kind of like. One chance, One chance you've got. I did find that earlier. I was going, I was going for like a string of collectibles, and then just just missed them. Yeah, and was it was like like just here. Yeah, ah! it feels really good when you manage to pick them, you know, all oh, all, all together. No, I died. I landed on spikes. <laughs> died a horrible, painful death. with induction by the lovely Brian <laughs> well, I was just saying this it really reminds me of Monument Valley were you were you inspired by that in the art style uh, not only by Monument Valley but I'm kind of really really flattered about that comparison because it's such a lovely game yeah it is no it, it's cool it, it's got those really clean lines and it's I mean I guess similar to Monument Valley it's a puzzle game yep. isn't it yep so it's a puzzle game about time travel and paradoxes ah wow that's a big thing to try and shrink down into a game yeah, so it starts, it starts off pretty simply, um, your cube going around this isometric landscape and you get to jump back in time and cooperate with a past version of yourself. But then it kind of gets a bit weirder where you sort of have to break the timeline but then repair it again. So it might be you go back in time, steal something from your past self, but then you have to find a way to give it oh. back to your past self so you're not creating any weird time paradoxes. Gosh, that is complicated. What I'm trying to do with, with this game is kind of get, get it so that players can intuitively get their head around time travel. So it starts off, I will, I'll have like a particular consequence of time travel I want to demonstrate and then try and find a puzzle that demonstrates that as simply as possible. And then I'll do a lot of play testing and a lot of time on play testing. It'll turn out I've put like four or five different ideas in this one puzzle and then I'll kind of try and find a way to kind of sport, split them all out. Is it PC or mobile? Um, so um, I kind of have it back in my head, I do want to do mobile release, but right now I'm focusing on PC. Focusing on PC. I, I'm kind of a bit of a sadist of the game zone, because I like seeing kind of people getting like so, so frustrated with it, but kind of refusing to step away. And then when they get it, they're telling me like it makes them feel like a genius. That's kind of like so, so good to see. Nice, so your game is teaching time travel yep. and making people the world over geniuses. Yes. I'd say that's a pretty good kind of target yeah, <laughs> for yeah. your game. Yeah. Great, can I have a go? Yeah, go for it. Awesome.
<laughs> There's just mosquitoes everywhere in Sweden. They're just eaten alive. Right, Ugh. quickly before we go. That was the first week here at Sturgeon. We're entering week two. Um, it's been pretty intense. Check back regularly for updates on what all the developers are up to. We'll be filling you in with all the games that are being created. There's 23 developers here, so it's a lot to get through. Um, but yeah, don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week.